Hello and welcome to Tech Deals. Today we're going to talk about the high-end desktop PC as it stands today. This is part two of a three-part series on HEDT systems in general with a bit of history and forward-looking sprinkled in for good measure. If you have not watched part one, please do that first. It is linked in the video description below and it contains a ton of background info going back 20 years to the launch of the first official HEDT chip, the Pentium 4 Extreme Edition, a week before the Athlon 64 was released. Today is all about, well, today, as in the present time of high-end desktop PCs in general. Next to me is my current i9-10980XE, build that I have used for three years now. In addition to that, we'll talk about Threadripper and the current premium chips, the i9-13900K and the Ryzen 9 7950X, because those are pretty high-end as well. Without further ado, please grab a drink, grab a snack, and let's get into it. Buy Windows 10 Professional for $15, activate instantly online with Microsoft, and keep it forever. Don't pay full price, get the best deal from our sponsor, URCD Keys, using our link in the video description below. Full details on how this amazing deal works at the end of the video. HEDT, or high-end desktop, typically refers to a higher level CPU or CPU motherboard combo than typical consumers use. For the past decade, that has been a different socket and CPU pair than the typical consumer level boards. However, as I noted in part one, that wasn't always the case. I'll talk more in part three about the future and where this may be going. But for now, let's talk about the best of the current official HEDT systems. The first one is sitting right here on the desk. This is an i9-10980XE based PC using a lovely X299 gigabyte Aorus master motherboard, fancy name. The i9-10980XE is an 18 core 36 thread CPU with a three gigahertz base clock speed, a 3.8 gigahertz all core turbo, and a 4.8 gigahertz max turbo speed out of the box. It has a TDP of 165 watts and it was priced at $1,000 when it was launched in 2019. The code name for these CPUs is Cascade Lake X and they are based on Intel's Xenon server line of CPUs. While it really is just a refresh of Skylake X and Skylake X refresh, it is not the same physical chip with a clock speed boost. Intel did rework the CPUs for Cascade Lake X to include hardware protections for the first round of Spectre and Meltdown security patches, which the 9th gen Skylake X refresh did not have. It is worth noting that further security flaws have since been found, some of which were patched by microcode updates, some by OS updates, and a few are still not secured. Yeah, that's a scary thought, but it is what it is. It is worth putting the time frame this CPU was launched into perspective. AMD had just launched the Ryzen 9 3950X in 2019 for $750, putting it in direct competition with the i9-10980XE in terms of core count and CPU performance, if not motherboard features and advanced CPU features like AVX512 hardware support. I don't want to make this a review of this CPU. After all, I did that back in 2019. Please check out that video. However, I would just like to say that HEDT, as it has existed for the past decade, is more than just raw CPU performance. The 10980XE supports quad-channel RAM for twice the bandwidth of consumer PCs, either 28 or 44 PCI Express lanes on the CPU itself, with another 24 PCI Express lanes on the chipset on the motherboard for a total of up to 72 addressable PCI Express lanes total. It supports 256 gigabytes of RAM, which is twice what a consumer PC will use, and it can handle more advanced instructions such as AVX512 directly in hardware, greatly speeding up professional applications that use such things. It is worth noting that the raw compute power is almost equal between the i9-10980XE and the Ryzen 9 3950X, with Intel winning some benchmarks by about 10%, and AMD winning others by about 10%. For example, V-Ray is 14% faster on Intel and Blender is 12% faster on the AMD CPU, all else being equal. 
While that's great and all, where the 10980XE falls apart is in comparison to current CPUs such as the 13900K or the 7950X. Before I give you some numbers, let me just say that modern chips beat the pants off of CPUs from just three years ago, which we haven't seen for a while. So for those of you used to trivial performance gains year over year, prepare to be amazed. You can see the Ryzen 9 3950X beats the i9 10980XE by 13% in single thread and loses by 1% in multi-thread performance in Cinebench R23. In fairness, Cinebench tends to favor AMD, but it's a popular test that's easy to run on your own system, which is why we include it. Using the more balanced Geekbench 5, we can see the 3950X beats the 10980XE by 10% in single thread, and it loses by 10% in multi-threaded workloads. This tracks with my own personal experience using all of these CPUs. The 10980XE is not the snappiest system that I've used, but it does really well when fully loaded up with real programs running. Editing videos in Adobe Premiere Pro, using After Effects, rendering videos, Photoshop, all run smoother and faster on the 10980XE than an older Zen 2 based system, no matter what the benchmarks say. Having said that, the minute you step up to the new Zen 4 based Ryzen 9 7950X, all that goes right out the window. Here you can see Cinebench R23 and the 7950X soundly beats the 10980XE without reservation. The 7950X isn't double the performance of the 10980XE, but it is not far off. Moving right along to the more balanced Geekbench 5, and you'll see the same thing, only even more so in favor of AMD here. Of course, this doesn't make the 10980XE obsolete. However, the difference in actual performance with your hands on the keyboard is dramatic and noticeable. I recently built a Ryzen 9 7950X based system to replace my i9 9900K PC at home that was built on the channel a few years ago. The Stormtrooper build, for those of you who might remember it. Having used that for a few months now in day-to-day -day use, I can tell you it blows the pants off the 10980XE for intensive workloads. Moving right along to the other high-performance CPU on the market today, we have the Raptor Lake-based i9-13900K released just a few months ago. See our full review on both Raptor Lake and Zen 4 if you'd like more info on either CPU. The numbers are so close to the 7950X, I'm not going to read them all off to you here. Here are the charts. But instead, I'll just say that it's even faster than the 7950X in general for about the same money. What it lacks, sadly, is an upgrade path, which is one of the main reasons why I decided to build a 7950X at home instead of a 13900K. When Zen 5 launches in a year or so, I can upgrade with a drop-in replacement, which sadly, I can't do with Rapture Lake. So, case closed, right? The 10980XE is obsolete and should be replaced immediately for anything remotely approaching a professional use case. Well, not so fast. The problem is that neither the 7950X nor the 13900K support more than 128 gigs of RAM, they do not support quad channel RAM, they do not have lots of PCI Express lanes, and they do not even have full AVX512 support. Yes, yes, I can hear you all now. But tech, Zen 4 has AVX512. Sort of. But it is not the same thing as Intel's implementation, which is 512 bits wide. Zen 4 uses a 256-bit wide data path to keep clock speeds higher, sort of defeating the point. The benchmarks on X265 encoding that I've seen show that AVX512 improves performance by just 2.3% on the Ryzen 9 7900X versus disabling AVX512. Now, putting that issue aside, not everyone bought HEDT systems like Threadripper or Cascade Lake X for CPU performance. It was about those extra features like PCI Express lanes or more RAM support. If you don't care about CPU power and those features matter more to you, then continuing to use a Zen 2 based Threadripper such as a 24 core 3960X or this 18 core 10980XE may very well serve you well for a while. Just keep in mind that modern high-end CPUs from both Intel and AMD demolish both Threadripper and Cascade Lake X when it comes to overall CPU performance. It is not fair to just talk about the 10980XE, of course, even if this system is the focus of this video series. 
The Zen 3-based Threadripper Pro CPUs do exist, and if price is no concern, you can absolutely get a beast of a system using those. The only catch is that a 32-core Threadripper Pro 5975WX, say that five times fast, costs $3,200, almost six times the price of a 7950X today. You really, really need to have the PCI Express lanes and other features for that to remotely make any sense whatsoever. Otherwise, just get a Zen 4 or Raptor Lake system instead. What about the last consumer Threadripper CPUs, you might ask? If you have one and you're still using it, a Zen 2 based CPU like the 3970X will still get the job done with great multi threaded and decent single threaded performance. However, buying a new one today makes little sense. They still cost $2,000, and as you can see here, simply do not stand up to the performance of a $600 i9-13900K in Geekbench and will perform even worse in gaming and other normal desktop applications. The truth is, HEDT did not really die. It just moved to the consumer desktop platforms. When Skylake X, the predecessor to Cascade Lake X, went to 18 cores, and Threadripper was first released, the 1950X, with 16 cores way back in 2017, consumer CPUs were stuck at 4 cores for Intel and 8 cores for AMD. The high-end was truly high-end back then with no serious workstation-level parts for normal motherboards. That has now changed, as you've seen with the benchmarks today. A modern i9 or Ryzen 9 is performance competitive with some very expensive CPUs of just a few years ago, even the current ones sold today, while installing in consumer-friendly motherboards for an overall lower price. Want a basic consumer system, something mid-range perhaps? A Ryzen 7 7700X or an i5-13600K for $300 each is an incredible value for the money and the deal for most people looking to build a modest PC from the $1,500 to the $2,000 price range in 2023. Want a premium high-end desktop that can handle both gaming and non-gaming tasks? multitasking and has a long future in front of it, a Ryzen 9 7950X or an i9-13900K for about $600 are today's HEDT CPUs featuring levels of performance that could be only dreamed of just a few short years ago. Here is a chart showing the performance improvements from the FX8350 to the Ryzen 9 7950X. Single core performance quadrupled. Multi-core performance is simply off the chart. In reality, these are even further apart when you consider modern instructions, multitasking, RAM speeds, SSD speeds, PCI Express seeds, and more. The 8350 used PCI Express 2.0, while the 7950X uses PCI Express 5.0. The 8350 used DDR3 versus DDR5 on the 7950X. SSDs weren't standard, much less Gen 4 NVMe performance at the time the 8350 launched. The FX8350 launched almost exactly 10 years before the 7950X came out. The CPU performance increase alone is impressive, but so are all the other improvements since then. Imagine what we'll see 10 years from now. But can it even run Crisis? Finally, I want to talk about the fate of this PC that you see right here. I reviewed the 10980XE three years ago, and I have used it as part of the content creation process on the channel ever since. It has been my primary work PC here at the office. It is now being retired because of all the performance reasons listed in this video, and because the need for all those PCI Express lanes is not what it used to be, at least for me. When I first started working with Threadripper back in 2017, I purchased an ASUS M.2 HyperCard so I could install four NVMe SSDs into the third PCI Express X16 slot of my X399 motherboard and create a large, fast scratch drive for video editing. At the time, two terabytes was the largest reasonable NVMe drive size offered, and so I put four of the Intel 660p drives in, put them into a RAID 0 stripe, and I created a single 8 terabyte scratch drive for video editing. 
At that time, it was simply not possible to install four NVMe drives into consumer systems. Most had either one or two M.2 slots on the motherboard with a very, very rare few having three. But with the primary one being used for boot, you really only had one or two left over for storage. Fast forward to today and Z690 boards exist for the i9-13900K that have five M.2 slots on boards. Plus, NVMe has grown to offer reasonable four terabyte and eight terabyte drive sizes, thus removing the need for M.2 hypercards and PCI Express bifurcation on an X16 slot on an HEDT motherboard. 4K video did not magically get bigger in the past three years, but drives did. Thus, the benefits to HEDT platforms largely went away, at least for me. This is why my new video editing PC at the office will be an i9-13900K installed on a Gigabyte Z690 Aorus Master with five M.2 slots. My main video editing drive will be a four terabyte Western Digital SN850X Gen 4 drive with a second four terabyte drive acting as a common files drive for the resources that get used over and over from video to video. I also have an eight terabyte Samsung 870 Cubo SATA SSD that will store the recorded game benchmarks you see in so many of our videos. And the boot drive of that machine will be a two terabyte Samsung 980 Pro. That means that only three of the five M.2 slots will be in use, leaving me room to add more should it be needed in the future. This will give me a total of 18 terabytes of SSD storage to work with, an amount I couldn't have dreamed of just three years ago. Isn't technology awesome? Overkill? Perhaps it is, a bit, but it does make the editing process nicer and smoother, plus this PC will double as my main work PC, so it's a nice improvement over the i9-10980XE in that regard. Looking for a Windows 10 or 11 product key, but you don't want to spend $100 to $200 for it? Our sponsor, URCD Keys, provides discounted Windows keys at amazing prices. $15 for Windows 10 Professional, $21 for Windows 11 Professional, and just $60 for Microsoft Office 2021 Professional Plus. These product keys are the real deal. They activate directly with Microsoft Online, link to your Microsoft account, and they work forever. For Windows, you simply go to Settings, Update and Security, Activation, click Change Product Key, paste the key provided by URCD Keys, and in seconds, you're activated with Microsoft. For Office, go to setup.office.com, sign in with your Microsoft account, paste the product key provided by URCD Keys, and then download Office 2021 Pro Plus directly from Microsoft. Remember to use the discount code TD20 to save 25% off the already deeply discounted prices and support our channel at the same time. We have been using product keys from URCD Keys for almost five years now without any issues and encourage you to do so as well. Thank you all so much for watching to the very end of this video. Two gold stars for all of you still here. Like, comment, subscribe, do all the YouTube things. I would like to hear what you are currently using right now in the comment section below. At the end of part one, I asked you, what HEDT systems have you ever used in the past, if any? Tell me about the history of your PC use. I would like to know what you are all using for your primary main desktop PC right now. Is it HEDT? Is it a modern high performance chip? Is it maybe something older? I will of course ask you at the end of part three to tell me what your future plans are because past, present, and future kind of works out. In addition to joining for $2 a month, if you wish to further support the channel and see over 120 member exclusive videos for $5 a month, you can actually access a very large library of exclusive videos which are not public and I currently don't intend to make them so. If you would like to see some complete build videos and fun behind the scenes stuff, please consider supporting us at the gold level if you are able to. Thank you so much for watching. I will see all of you next time.